We had quite a ride when it came to equity markets in 2019. Um, can we continue on this path or is this now the, the return to active funds? Uh, I think in the short run, <clears throat> despite all the noise about trade, I think it looks okay. We found out last year where the top for interest rates are arguably where the bottom for earnings is. So I think there's a bit of momentum behind markets and that will continue. I'm clearly biased, but I think active funds are really important. And as well as the sort of normal active versus passive debate, I think one of the things we're getting a real sense of uh, in the last couple of days is the importance of ESG, the importance of managing the climate transition. And if you're going to do that, you need an active allocator of capital. So active funds, I think, are going to again have their day. So what does it mean for Aberdeen? Are you changing your, you know, have you exercised the different voting rights? What does it, how do you uh, tackle climate change and sustainability? We, we have been running <coughs> we've integrated ESG into our investment process uh, and we've been doing ESG since 1993. So we're a long-term player. What we have done this year is we've made sure that uh, we take uh, due account of uh, climate change, of global warming, integrated that into our investment process yeah. and even into asset allocation. Uh, so, you know, the really big strategic things that are important, yeah. it's very very, very important you take account of all this. But, do, but does it also mean going up to chief executive saying, you know, I own 4% of, of your, your whatever, your firm, and if you don't change, I'm pulling out? We're an integrated, we're an integrated firm, so yeah. we engage uh, all over the world on, on these issues. Yeah. One of the things that's really important is this is not about ex in exclusion. This is actually about managing a transition. So what is really important is getting people to be aware of the risks and start shifting uh, the uh, agenda and when necessary yeah I, I, I get involved are, are there bubbles <coughs> in the markets is it price to perfection or are there actually industries you know the tech sector others which where you kind of feel uneasy yeah about yeah so so I, I, I think you know where there's growth and it's concentrated in tech uh, there's a huge difference between that and value, between developed market growth, largely the US and uh, emerging, uh, emerging markets. So I think if we are to see momentum continuing you know, beyond the early part of the year, we're going to have to see a broadening and deepening of, uh, of the market. And, and, and you know what? Things are so extended, um, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Okay, we're entering year three of your merger. What happens to, to outflows and inflows? Um, we're heading towards a closed period. We've got results on uh, uh, the early part of March, March 10th. So and, frenzy, uh, stop, up. We'll, stop asking. We'll, 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 update the market, uh, we'll update the market then, yeah. Okay, have you made any changes, for example, to uh, SLA in the wake of liquidity blow-ups that we saw in 2019? Uh, liquidity is something that we have always thought about and managed very carefully, like many big asset management houses. What's important with liquidity is that you adhere to the spirit of the legislation rather than uh, if you will the letter of uh, the letter of the law so um, you know we have a large fund called called gaz which has had a difficult time it's seen over many years um, some outflows and one of the things we're very proud about is um, it's never been gated it's never been closed it's always had the right amount of liquidity to let clients in and out but but has anything changed in your perception you have some you know chief executives of big asset managers saying I don't want any more of these like star fund managers because something could go wrong with them yeah so we've always run you know we run 550 billion of assets and our approach uh, has always been team and you know we talk about uh, process philosophy and people you get the right process the right philosophy populated by the right people and you can run the money so if individuals change the team is there to run uh, the clients money and I think you know there have been wake-up calls you know uh, in uh, 2019 uh, saying you know it's it's not about an individual don't buy the individual buy the investment process and in that part of the retail market 
I think it's really important that, um, how can I put it, that the, 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 the industry professionalizes. Um, talk to me a little bit about expansion. Would you expand in, in private markets? Uh, yeah, it's a big strategic priority for us. We run about 71 billion sterling, so about 100 billion uh, US across the broad spectrum of private equity, infrastructure, uh, private debt, and, uh, and and we're pretty big in uh, in uh, private uh, private real estate. So, given the liquidity premium, given the uh, illiquidity premium, given the demand from clients, yeah, it's a big focus of attention for us. So, would you would you um I guess expand in private equity or, or private debt? Uh, I think across uh, across the piece, uh, because one of the things I think we can offer to clients uh, is our ability for small to medium sized clients to do strategic alloc asset allocation uh, between uh, between the pots. So it'll be a a a, a, a broad push our big expertise is really in um, in private real estate yeah but how much bigger will that part be in in I don't know if it's 12 months or 24 months uh, if you look at uh, I think it's longer than that so I think if you look at the allocations you know people say there's about 15 percent allocated to private uh, markets it'll go up to 20 and I think coming back to climate change you know, one of the things that I think will happen is some of the transition period. We'll see, I think, some assets going private before they come uh, before they come public. So, um, you know, we want to be uh, we want to be part of that, making sure it's it's steady growth. Is, but it, so, going back to ESG, can we really make a difference if there, there's so much passive money out there? So, it's index funds. Where actually the, the, the ESG component is, is much more difficult to measure. You can uh, you can make a difference, but in order to make a difference, you've got to speak up, you've got to be vocal. I think you've also going back to the exclusion point, you've got to be invested, and you have absolutely uh, got to got to engage. And I, I think as a firm, you know, we have a really proud track record of, uh, of doing that. The last couple of days, there's an awful lot of rhetoric about this stuff. The really important thing is we don't lose sight of what needs to be done and the reality and what gets done uh, matches uh, matches the rhetoric. So for the moment, we seem to have you know dealt with Brexit, uh, the Middle East, we had loads of headlines. What's the one event that you worry about putting a lot of volatility in the markets? Is it the US elections? Is it China? Is it something else? It's all of those. Look, I've, been, I've been involved in markets for 40 years. One of the things I've learned is don't try and see round too many corners because if we're talking about it, if we know it, it's by and large priced in. It's something that comes from, uh, from left field.